Kate Blackwell ist die absolute Herrscherin des Diamantenimperiums Krüger Brent. Ihr Vater, James McGregor, hatte lange Jahre vor dem Ersten Weltkrieg Diamanten in der Wüste Namib gefunden, darunter auch einen großen Stein, der zwar wertlos war, aber zum Symbol des Aufstiegs der jungen Firma wurde. Ihrem Vater hat Kate nicht mehr kennengelernt und auch ihre Mutter verlor sie früh. Mit 18 übernahm sie selbstbewusst die Leitung des Unternehmens und heiratete David Blackwell, den Freund ihres Vaters. Als Kate von Brad, ihrem Sekretär und Vertrauten, die Nachricht vom tödlichen Unfall ihres Mannes erhält, ist sie verzweifelt. Mit größter Intensität widmet sie sich dem inzwischen weltweiten Unternehmen und ganz besonders der Erziehung ihres einzigen Sohnes Tony, der einmal ihr Erbe antreten soll. Der Zweite Weltkrieg geht zu Ende. Entgegen dem Willen seiner Mutter studiert Tony in Paris Malerei. Aber durch bezahlte negative Kritiken erreicht Kate, dass er die Malerei aufgibt und Mary Ann, die reiche Erbin eines Elektronikkonzerns, heiratet. Tonys Glück ist nur kurz, denn bei der Geburt von Zwillingen stirbt Mary Ann. Da seine Mutter vom Risiko bei der Geburt gewusst hat, macht Tony sie für den Tod seiner Frau verantwortlich und schießt in seiner rasenden Wut auf sie. Kate erholt sich wieder, aber Tony wird wahnsinnig und in ein Privatsanatorium gebracht. Die französische Kinderfrau Solange erzieht die Zwillinge Eve und Alexandra und erkennt auch bald deren unterschiedliche Charaktere. Mit 17 kommen die Zwillinge in ein Schweizer Internat. Eve treibt es sogleich mit den jungen Kadetten und wird von der Schule relegiert, was sie jedoch ihrer Großmutter verschweigt. Brad, Vizepräsident von Krüger Brent und langjähriger Vertrauter von Kate, erzählt ihr, dass Eve rausgeworfen wurde und dass er sie für eine notorische Lügnerin hält. Kate glaubt ihm nicht. Sie hält Eve nur für clever und einfallsreich und sieht in ihr ihre Nachfolgerin. Als Kate jedoch erfährt, dass ihre Enkelin mit vielen Männern geschlafen hat und sogar mit dem alten Grafen Morier im Bett war, glaubt sie den Beteuerungen ihrer Enkelin nicht mehr und enterbt sie. Kate macht nun Alexandra zu ihrer Nachfolgerin und führt sie in die Leitung von Krüger Brent ein. Ihr größter Wunsch allerdings ist es, dass Alexandra bald heiratet und Kinder bekommt, damit die Erbfolge gesichert ist. Eve hingegen macht an der Riviera weiterhin Jagd auf Männer.
stinks of a bloodhound. I see you've spotted him. Nita? Come on. Eve Blackwell, George Mellis. Bless you, my children. <laughs> I saw you this afternoon. I know. I saw you too. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen on land or off. I almost crashed when I saw you. Can we go through the formalities first? I'm Greek. Like in God? Next. Family? Father and mother over there. They grow olives. Ah, oh, yes. We're on grocery shelves all over the country. And you're very rich. Like in gold. Garçon, s'il vous plaît. Shall we dance? Some of the others, they, they weren't as beautiful as you are. Are you insane? No, no, please. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I'll keep these as a little souvenir, all right?
Yes. So, how was the Riviera? And what happened to that lovely face? Oh, I, uh, I slipped on some marble stairs and went head first. Beyond that, all I saw was an emergency room. And Nita Ludwig's party. Uh, I do have the guest list. Well, was it a fun time? I saw a lot of old friends. Mm -hmm. And interesting men? Just one. George something. George... George... George Miller? Mellis, my dear. George Mellis. <laughs> the Golden Greek. That's the one. Do you know him? Unfortunately, no, but I've seen him. I thought I was going to turn into a pillar of salt. He's so fantastic looking. <laughs> he seemed kind of a loner to me. Oh, he was sociable enough, but I think he's got more going for him than just Jet Set. You're a pretty shrewd little girl, Eve. <sighs> you could play checkers with his background. Gossip from the best gossip columnist in New York. How wonderful. Now tell me all about George Mellis. Hello, Eve. I'm so glad you called. May I come in? Yes. Mm. Very nice. Well, help yourself. It's all insured. You know, I missed you. I've thought about you ever since that. Because if you ever touch me like that again, I'll kill you. Come to George. Take your hands off. Hey, what's going on? I mean, you get me up here all soft on the phone, and then you do everything but pull a knife. I want to talk to you, George. You want to talk to me about what? Well, you see, I've been doing a little research about you. You're a bum, George. A multi-million dollar business was going to be yours. But your father threw you out. It seems you embarrassed him. Police in Athens kept arresting you for beating up ladies. That wasn't good for the family pride. So they shipped you off to America, where there was a fresh supply of victims like me. No, just stand there and listen to the best business proposition you've ever heard. I am business, Eve. You work in a brokerage house where you sweet talk silly old ladies into buying stocks and bonds. But for a man like you, that's petty cash. I'm talking about a hundred million dollars. To start. My family is rich and you're broke. Since I've been disinherited, unfortunately, that puts you and I on the same side. So what's the proposition? My sister Alexandra stands to take over the Blackwell estate. What's all that got to do with me? Mary Alexandra. And it's all ours. Sorry. I couldn't be tied down to anyone for long. Well, as it happens, that's not a problem. You see, my sister has always been accident prone. have it hard, you know. Hello? Why, George, hello. Hmm. I don't think you know my sister Alex. Alex, George Millis. Delighted. Can you join us? Oh, I wish I could, but I'm late for an appointment. Another time, perhaps. And hopefully soon. You know, you may be the first sisters I know who don't have to be jealous for each other. Because you're both very beautiful. Did he really happen? You might as well take a number, honey. He's not my type, but most women seem to find him irresistible. I believe it. Is he married? No, but not because they're not out there trying. He's a triple threat. Money, social position, good looks. We met at Nita Ludwig's house. 
beginning to sound like Dorothy Hollister. Alexandra Blackwell and her charming sister Eve dined at La Ronde, where Alexandra confined her urge to merge. I don't even know the man. Maybe you'll get lucky. My check, please. Let me have it. Sorry, it was my invitation. Excuse me, ladies, but your check has been taken care of. Mr. George Mellis asked that you be his guest. Thank you. How nice of him. Very. Right, George, concentrate. These are lists of her favorite restaurants, foods, books, colors, Flowers, music, paintings. Are you listening? When are you and I going to be friends again? We'll see. Now, you have to remember that we can finally get Alexandra alone. You have to behave yourself. Try to make believe you're not the animal you really are. How do we know it's going to work? Because I'm the greatest living expert on my sister and grandmother. Believe me, it can't go wrong. Now, take these lists and memorize them. Grand, do you think I should? Mm. Mm. You'll have a wonderful time watching all the infighting. <laughs> There's a call for you, Miss Alexandra. And did they say who it was? A Mr. George Mellis. Excuse me. Hello? I hope you don't mind my asking Eve for your number. I'm glad you did. I've been wanting to thank you for lunch. Next time, I would like to share the table. Why don't we have dinner? Yes, I'd like that. There's a small restaurant uh, down on Mulberry Street. Few people know about it. It's called Mentoons. Mentoons? Oh, how I love it. It's one of my favorite restaurants. Do you mean that? Or are you just being nice? Alexandra, that she's beautiful. You can mention it, but don't beat it to death. Talk about her. What she feels, what she likes, what she reads. You have to care about what she thinks. That's important to her. That you see her as a person. Yes. Yes, I understand. That's exactly the way I feel. For instance, I'm doing something I like. Having a marvelous time. And I think soon it's going to end. Suddenly, I'm sad. Yes, that's it. That's it exactly, George. You do understand. I want to. Be careful. Don't touch. She has to make the first move. Would you care to order? Do you want the menu? Or may I suggest something? I'm in your hands. We'll begin with the stuffed artichokes. Then, fil de maison. And uh, would like some angel hair pasta. That's the house speciality. Oh. Be very careful with the peppers. Red or white wine? I can't break this up now. Name it. The Sebastiani Cabernet Reserve. An excellent bottle. George. And we're going to have our brandy at the five spot on St. Mark's Place. Cecil Taylor is playing there. A brilliant jazz piano. Well, this is incredible. I adore his music. And for dinner, you ordered all my favorite dishes. Do you do mind reading on the side? No. But you're making a believer of me. Am I? I remember the American movies when I was a child. In Greece, beautiful women. Handsome men. Their eyes would meet. Every music. And then there was love. It was all a fantasy to me. A story for people who sat in the dark and dreamed. Now perhaps. It's not such a dream after all. I told you to take her to the Frick Collection. There's a Turner there she's crazy about. And the Elgar Concerto with Consult. Did you send that? Answer me. Don't worry about it. Well, it's taking too long. You must have forgotten something. But I'm doing all right. By now, she should have asked you to meet Grandmother. She will. Grandmother's ears go up whenever Alex goes out with a man. 
You've got to give her more than roses. I have something for Alex. Here. You've been holding out on me. Just be a good boy and you'll have lots of goodies all your own. Alexandra's body as beautiful as yours. You're nothing without me. You remember that, so don't push your luck. Maybe one of these days, if you're a good boy, we'll see if you really know how to be a man. But until then, just keep your hands off me. Sure. First, we're going to take care of your sister. And then we'll talk about us. Grant, this is George. Mr. Mellis, I was beginning to think you didn't exist. On the contrary, Mrs. Blackwell. You have no idea how I've been looking forward to meeting you. Please sit down. Be careful, no flattering. Thank you. It's like a red flag to the old biddy. You do make a very handsome couple. Mr. Mellis, I would like you to satisfy my curiosity for me. On what, Mrs. Blackwell? I find it very strange that you would choose to work as a salaried employee when you could be heading a very profitable family business. Gran, I can explain that. Why don't we let Mr. Mellis explain instead? Now, be polite, George, but don't get down on your knees. Show any weakness and she'll tear you apart. I really don't like to discuss my private life, but under the circumstances. You see, if I were the founder of Mellis and Company, I'd be running it today. But my grandfather started it. And my dad made it into the multi-million dollar business it is now. They don't need me. Besides, they have my brothers to help them. Rather independent, aren't you? I want to build my own company, yes. But your family, Mr. Mellis, is your family wealthy? All she wants to know is if you're very rich and that you love Alexandra. Be charming, watch your temper, and you've got it made. The only thing this Greek family doesn't own are ships. You'd better tell the truth. She reads the Dunn and Bradstreet reports. So I understand. George is very close to his family. It's very important to him, as it should be. Dinner is served, ma'am. Thank you, Roger. You look at him the way I looked at my David. May I? Alex, dear, how did it go? She did? Oh, s slow down, slow down. I'm not going anywhere, honey. Tell me all about it. The 
This is George Mellis. We've got a problem. What problem? The old lady loved me. You passed the charm test. Now she's got Brad Rogers checking into your finances. Well, she knows what my family's worth. Except for your song and dance about being independent. Now she wants to know if you're independently wealthy. What do I do? Get a million dollars by this afternoon or it's all over. A million dollars? <laughs> Are you crazy? Where am I going to get a million dollars? Well, it shouldn't be a problem for a thief like you. Especially where you work. Now listen carefully, George. Thatcher? This is George Mellis, Helen. Oh, George, I'm sorry about that margin call, but your account was under. Oh, no, no problem. They were just following the rules. Oh, Helen, you. could you come downstairs for a minute? There's something I want to ask you. Well, I I'm a little busy just now, George. Could it wait? It's a surprise, but never mind. Some of the time. No. Oh, that's all right. I'll be down right away. Please forgive me. I was caught the way. My, you look lovely today. So, what's the surprise? Well, I heard it was your birthday. And I'd like to invite you to lunch. That's very sweet of you, George. Of course, I'll come. You're always asking me home for a good home-cooked meal. Well, now I'm going to take you to one of my favorite places. Mentoons. seen you before. Oh, this isn't my territory. One of my customers suddenly decided he wanted to see his certificates. So I'm going to have to dig them out. What a drag. Good luck. Thank you. I'm so sorry. 
we should try to do this more often. Are you free for lunch tomorrow? Oh. I know this is very old-fashioned, but uh, Alexandra and I love one another very much. We don't want, nor do we need, the black hole money. But what we do want is your blessing. As for my wedding present for Alexandra, it's these one million dollars in blue chip stocks. I took them out of the vault this afternoon and they go right back for safekeeping in the morning. The young man has a very direct approach, Alexandra. You want my blessing? Very well, you have. I bought you this scarf, Helen. Happy birthday. Oh, George, you're a darling. You must come to dinner tonight. I'm afraid that's impossible. I'm getting married. sister might be wondering why I had to leave her on her wedding night. I told you what to say. That you had an emergency and had to go to the airport. Why did you get me down here? What did you want, Eve? You're going out. How was the wedding? Did Alex miss me? She begged the old lady to let you come. Well, I suppose that evens things out, doesn't it? Your poor father had a heart attack. That's why he couldn't come to the wedding. Isn't that what you told me? Now listen carefully, George. You've been a good boy, and you deserve a little holiday. So I'm going to let you and Alexandra have your honeymoon. And when you get back, I'll have all your new instructions ready. But in the meantime, here's to my sister's short but un. She's waiting. George, Alexandra and I have always shared everything. I don't think she'll mind if I share her husband. Take off your clothes, darling. If you mean that, you're the one who's crazy. Oh, I mean it. Now do as I say. You really don't like women, do you, George? You only enjoy hurting them. You'd like to hurt me again, wouldn't you? I'd like to kill you. But you won't. Because you want the money as much as I do. You'll never hurt me, George. Because if anything ever happens to me, there's a letter my friend will take to the Oh, thank God they found you. Uh, 
happened? Accident. Can you put it together? That's what I do, John. Put them back together. <laughs> My name is Keith Webster. I'm going to operate on you. chance. I'm going to put you to sleep now. Try to relax. If Eve hadn't asked me not to call the police, you'd be in jail right now. Dr. Hartley, I swear, I don't remember it happening. That's the truth. You've already ruined Eve's life. I'm not going to let you ruin Alexandra's. I won't because I love her. Tonight, was just madness. Oh, sure. You'd have to be a sadist to do what you did. Why, every bone in her face is smashed. She's fighting for her life in there. I know I can't make you understand, Doctor. It has to do with something that happened there to There is you. no excuse in the world for what you did. But since this is the Blackwell family, I don't want them to be hurt any more than they already have been. So I'm going to make a deal with you, Alice. Anything you want, Doctor. It's either this or the police. Get it? You are going to start seeing a psychiatrist. I agree. Yeah. And while you're at it, you better get a priest as well. Because if she dies, all bets are off. that this should have happened on this night. Of all nights. It's all right, darling. We have a whole lifetime together. That was beautiful, darling. Oh, give me a drink, won't you, darling? I'll be right back. I have to call New York. Business. Don't be long. I won't. The surgery took nine hours. No, she's still in intensive care. Now, when are you coming back? I've got a psychiatrist to take your case. No, I won't accept any excuses. You're to start treatment at once. And, Mellis, one more thing. Eve wants to see you. Forgive me, Angel. I was at my attorney's. He's a genius for making the simplest thing complicated. You look upset. What's wrong? Nothing. I just changed my will. That's all. 
Thank you. If anything ever happens to me, everything I own goes to you. Nothing's going to happen. I don't want your money. I don't need it. I know you don't. But I still want you to have it. It's not a very pleasant thing to talk about. But it's best to plan ahead. That's right, isn't it? Well, then I'll change my will, too. That's something you don't have to do. I can't bear to think of anything happening to either of us. But you're right. It's smart to plan. I'll call Brad Rogers tomorrow about changing my will. If that's what you want, it might be easier if my lawyer did it for you. You see, he's familiar with all the details of my estate. He can coordinate everything. Right. Just set up an appointment. You know, Grand thinks that you should try... I adore your grandma. I, I don't think there's any reason to bother her with any of this. I believe we ought to keep our personal affairs to ourselves. You're right. You're right, darling. I won't tell Grandmother. And I don't want to talk about this anymore because nothing is ever going to happen to us. Sorry, we're fresh out of mirrors. Nurses say you work miracles. <clears throat> Depends what I have to work with. They told me you put me back together. Thanks. There's time to say that. Thanks for the flowers. The nurses talk too much. I saw you bring them in. Just good patient care, that's all. See you come in when you think I'm sleeping. You're very good to me. The woman that marries you will have a fine man. Is all this instead of paying my bill? And they say you work with children who are hurt at birth. <clears throat> I'm a real hero, aren't I? Or perhaps it's just that the world judges people by their looks and I try to help those that didn't get too much at the beginning. Try to get some rest. Oh, I've done all I can. Time will do the rest. I'll see you later. full-time. I've been thinking about it. I know how much you want it. But Eve was really your choice to take over the company. That's in the past. You're my heir now. George is the executive, not me. He's the one that should be there. Alex, I don't think that's anything for us to discuss. Why not? It's a family matter. Kate. Kate. Kate, yeah. mm. you all right? Mm. Mm. Alexandra, I want you to reconsider what I say. What are you doing over here? You want a better view or something? I have been to see John Harley. Have you? Why do I have to go see a doctor? Oh, there's no reason I can think of. Just general principles. There's not a thing wrong with me. I get a little tired now and then, but that's to be expected at my age. Now, Alexandra, I mean what I say, and I want you to think about it. I have, and Eve is still the one. And I say to you again, you're in my will. Eve is not. Now, what's the matter with you? Why did you go see Dr. Harley? Do you feel any pain? No. Any tightness? No. Bring Miss Blackwell a mirror, please.
scars. You were right. You do make miracles. Look what I had to work with. We were having an argument. And I really don't know what happened after that. It was like some sort of an explosion. I heard her scream. Then when it was all over, she was lying there. I thought, well, I, I guess Dr. Harley told you everything. As a matter of fact, he didn't. He just asked me to see you. Have you any idea what caused you to strike him? I've been under a strain lately. My father's been seriously ill. I had a few heart attacks. We're a very close family, you understand? Mm. And then there's my wife. She is the real problem. In what way? Be careful now, do it right. Play the concerned husband. Peter Templeton is the next best thing to a mind reader. Alexandra hasn't been very well lately. What's wrong? I wish I knew. It all started right after we got back from our honeymoon. She's depressed. Look at him. Tell it to him straight. She talks about killing herself. Has she gone for professional treatment? That's the real problem. She refuses. Then I think you ought to talk it over with Dr. Hartley. He's your family physician. If he thinks a psychiatrist is necessary, you'll recommend one. I wouldn't want my wife to think that I was going behind her back. That's all right, Mr. Millis. I'll call for you. 